Happy Sunday. I wanted to let my customers at Born Again Baking know that I'm not selling baked goods to customers at this time. However, I still wanted to keep baking and I wanted to continue sharing my baked goods with you somehow. So I prayerfully considered how I could do that and I realized that I could share my recipes with you as I make them and hopefully it could inspire you to make some stuff yourself. And of course, if I see you in day-to-day -day life, then I'd be happy to share stuff with you still. So today I'm making caramel apple pie cinnamon rolls. I've got mostly everything prepped up already. I have my dough made and I'll post the recipe and let you know how you can make your dough and everything and the filling too. But for now it was easier to just prep everything up this morning and um, start showing you how to do it from the step of everything being prepped up already. But if you'd like me to show you how to make the dough, just let me know, I'd be happy to do so. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll our dough out into a 12 by 18 inch rectangle. Um, and we have our flour handy in case we need flour for rolling. We have our filling made already here. I have apple butter and homemade caramel sauce for the filling. In addition to chopped up apples with cinnamon in it. It's gonna be really yummy. Um, and I don't have a rolling pin, actually, so I'm going to be using this water bottle, so don't make fun of me. Well, actually, if you want, you can make a little bit of fun of me, but just try to be nice. Alright, so we've got our nice dough here. It's soft. It was sticky before, but it's not really sticky anymore. Really formed into a good stretchy dough. And I added some apple pie spices to my dough and some maple syrup just to give it that nice full flavor. Alright, here we go with our um, resourceful rolling pin. It's in a whirl. I've actually never done this before with a um, made up rolling pin. <laughs> Usually I have a normal rolling pin, but. By the way, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to still be able to connect with you all, no matter where I am. It's nice to stay connected to friends. And you don't have to do it on a cutting board either, but um, I just found that this cutting board was approximately the right size for what I'm doing here, so worked out. Less measuring. We just want to roll it out to a pretty even rectangle so we can spread our filling on the dough before we roll it up. I'm really happy with how this dough looks and feels. I was playing around with the recipe a little bit, which is um, typically a little bit risky in baking because it is a science and things need to things need to be a certain way in order for things to go well. But um, as you do more and more baking and get the hang of it, you realize um, where you have leeway and where you don't. It's just kind of a learning process, like anything, but if you're trying this recipe for the first time, I wouldn't recommend changing it because you might put a lot of work in just to find out that it doesn't rise properly or it's not the right texture or something like that. All right, so we have it rolled out. It's a pretty even thickness. 
and we're ready to start spreading our apple butter slash caramel mixture. And again, I'm gonna um, give you the recipe with all the exact measurements and everything. All right, and we wanna leave about a half an inch um, border on all the sides of our rectangle so that we don't overfill it too much and let all of our filling drip out the sides. It's okay if that happens a little bit, of course. I mean, it is a gooey cinnamon roll, but we just want to try to keep as much of our filling inside of it as possible. Looks a little bit like a pizza right now. Spread in the sauce. Okay, so it's, a, it's a pretty thin layer, but it's definitely there. We used, um, just for reference, we used six tablespoons of unsweetened apple butter because I didn't want it to be too sweet, and three tablespoons of my homemade caramel sauce. I made the caramel sauce like a week ago and just have had it in the fridge and was looking for something to uh, make with it. Same thing with the apples. I just love getting creative with baking and just using up what I have and it's fun. All right, so now that we have our layer of caramel apple butter, with uh, just by the way, with typical cinnamon rolls, you would have um, a layer of butter, but since it's gonna be like a reminiscent of caramel apple pie, we're using apple butter and caramel and I think it will be just as delicious. But this is the first time I'm making this recipe and I made it up, so we'll see. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, cinnamon apples, here we come. Just gonna dole it out pretty evenly. Drop it on there and spread it out. With typical cinnamon rolls, usually you would just be sprinkling like a cinnamon sugar mixture on top. But this is, I guess, kicking it up a notch here. So you can see there, we've got all of our apples on top. I'm just gonna rinse my hands off before I roll it. You wanna roll it up very tightly. Make them nice and compact. Again, so our filling stays in there as best it can. So I'm going to roll, I'm going to tuck a tiny bit, roll again, just slowly, evenly. Okay. And now I'm just also pushing the apples in a little bit so that they all get into the roll. Pull this lip up, keep those apples nice and tucked. All right, we've got a nice cinnamon roll log now. I'm 
Pull the ends in, tuck it a little bit. All right. So now that we have our log, we're gonna cut it into 12 individual rolls. I'm gonna get a nice sharp kitchen knife for that so that it's just to make the cutting easier, go more smoothly. We'll start by cutting it in half. And then cut each half in half. Now since I have four, I'm gonna cut each one into three to get 12. And as I cut them, I'm just going to place them into a greased baking dish, 9 by 13 inches. I've already greased my baking dish here. Um, it's just easier to do before the video because I like to do it outside since uh, we don't need our whole kitchen to be greased, just this one dish. Get a spatula out to make it easier. Just dish over. Right, don't mind me, I'm still getting used to this kitchen, so I don't remember where everything is. <laughs> You can see how it's kind of goopy and stuff, but it'll firm up as it bakes. Also, they look um, a lot shorter and thinner right now, but eventually um, they're going to rise again. We're not going to put them in the oven right away. We're going to leave them out for 45 to 60 minutes so that they can rise a bit more. Definitely a lot of steps involved um, anytime you're baking with yeast because you have to wait for it to rise and you have to knead the dough and whatnot. But um, you can break it up into smaller steps as needed and it's kind of cool because you know if it's a process that takes all day long it's very gratifying at the end 
when you have your freshly baked goods and you can share them with people. I don't have a lot of people to share them with right now, so I'm thinking I might individually wrap them or just wrap them into um, smaller containers and maybe pass them out to my neighbors or something. But it's great like if you're having company or if you have a big family and you can just um, serve it for breakfast or brunch. And my cutting wasn't exactly even, and this one doesn't look like it's going to want to go into two more slices, so this is just going to be a nice, a nice big monster roll here. We'll put that on the edge so that it doesn't, uh, so that it bakes enough. Alright, three more to go here. So I'll probably have 11 rolls then, and that's okay. We don't have to have, aside from just the science and the measurements, we don't have to have too many rules when it comes to making things. Just have fun with it. Push them in there. That way they will support each other as they bake. If you want to move the apples around a little bit, if you see there's a lot on one and not enough on another, you can do that. Once you get the basics down, baking can be intuitive, believe it or not. Alright, so I've got all my rolls uh, stuffed in here together. They're just all touching each other nice and close so that, um, again, they can support each other as they rise and as they bake, and then you'll just pull them apart at the end. So I'm going to let this, I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil so that no air gets to it because um, I want the, uh, the juices to be all trapped in there and I don't want them to dry out while they're rising. So um, yeah, I'll just leave it for 45 to 60 minutes and um, then I'll preheat my oven to 375 and bake them. So I'm just getting ready to make my frosting for the caramel apple pie cinnamon rolls. And to do that, I'm thinking of making a caramel maple cream cheese frosting. Uh, normally we would use milk, powdered sugar, and um, butter and cream cheese in our uh, frosting for our cinnamon rolls, but I'm doing it a little bit different this time since it's an apple pie cinnamon roll and we want that caramel flavor to really come through. So I'm going to be adding some of my homemade uh, caramel sauce to it and some maple syrup just to give it extra flavor. So to start, we need five tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of cream cheese. I'm going to add that to a microwave safe bowl because we're going to melt them together before we add our other ingredients to it. And you know, I'm going to chop the butter too so that it melts more evenly and quickly. Just pop that in the microwave for a couple seconds until it melts.
All right, our butter and cream cheese are pretty much melted in here. Just gonna give it a little stir to complete the melting process. Combine it nicely. And just a quick public service announcement to anybody else who might be trying this. Um, if you are dressed in your church clothes, you should probably wear an apron while you're melting butter because there's always the possibility of splattering. Um, I don't have an apron right now, so I'm just trying to be extra careful. I guess we make do with what we have. So to our melted cream cheese and butter, we're going to add one cup of powdered sugar. And also a pinch of salt to balance the flavor out so it's not overly sweet. And we're going to whisk that in there until it's smooth and we don't see any more lumps of powdered sugar. Um, there is a benefit to melting the butter here because it actually helps dissolve the sugar so that you get a very smooth consistency. See how nice and smooth that is? And now for flavor, I want to add two tablespoons of my homemade caramel sauce. You can use store-bought too, but um, I think I said this before, I just had caramel sauce already made from like the other week and I just wanted to use it. And I also want to add two tablespoons of maple syrup. Again, for flavor, but also because the uh, I'm substituting what would normally be milk in this recipe. Um, because we already have cream cheese in there, so it's going to be creamy. And um, the milk also serves to thin the icing out for the cinnamon rolls. Um, but it'll be, it'll be a good texture, I have a feeling. It'll be like a nice... Um, sweet caramely glaze. Just going to whisk all that together. So again in here we have five tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of cream cheese melted, one cup of powdered sugar, a pinch of salt, two tablespoons of caramel sauce, and two tablespoons of maple syrup. And there we have our nice uh, maple caramel cream cheese glaze for our cinnamon rolls. And we're just going to cover this and put it aside for now. And then um, we just want to have it like handy and keep it at room temperature for later after our cinnamon rolls are done baking so that we can pour the glaze over top while they're still warm so that they really sink in and absorb the flavors. So it's been about 45 minutes, so I'm going to check on my cinnamon rolls now. And they look really good and puffy. Looks like they're ready to go in the oven.
So I just set my timer for 25 minutes at 375 degrees and then we'll check on them once the oven goes off so that we can ice them and I'll show you their final form. I think it's that time so I'm going to go check on my cinnamon rolls in the oven. Looks good. I'm gonna set it on my cooling rack here for a couple minutes. And then while it's still warm, I'm gonna frost it with our maple caramel cream cheese glaze. You can really see like the apples and the cinnamon on top. I think it's gonna be good. Very excited. So we are finally ready to add our uh, caramel maple cream cheese frosting to our caramel apple pie cinnamon rolls. The final step. Here's our glaze. Just going to simply pour it over the cinnamon rolls while it's in the hot pan. And try to get it pretty evenly over them all. Just drizzle it. Ooh. That's nice. Glob it on there. And then once it's all distributed, you're just going to gently spread it to cover each roll. And um, at first it's going to look a little bit thicker, but as it heats up from the warmth of the cinnamon rolls, it's going to sink in and um, like absorb. So you'll you'll just see it become more... Um, translucent and thinner and it will look like it's disappearing but that's good that's what we want and I like to make sure that I get it on the the outside edges and corners because those are actually the bits that would dry out too like within a few hours so we just want to cover them up to seal in the moisture and make sure we get a nice even spread. And all the little crevices. And I just love how it melts into all the little nooks and crannies. I guess I'm a bit of a baking geek, but I think that anyone who knows me is very keen on that fact already. So this isn't a news show. Just, I'm really happy to be able to share my recipes with you now. Never really thought of it before, just didn't seem like something, I don't know, just didn't really seem like something I was interested in doing before, but now that I'm far away from a lot of my friends and customers um, and my church family, I just um, wanted to be able to still share things with you and connect with you and um, maybe it will even be helpful for you if you are interested in learning more about baking. Um, and if you ever thought to yourself that you wish you could have more of the stuff I bake on a regular basis, now you can because you can make it along with me. 
So we have our final product here of our caramel apple pie cinnamon rolls. Here's a close-up for you. You can see the cinnamon swirl and the apple bits and the caramel glaze. I'll take pictures for you to see the inside too. And I just want to let you know that I really wish I could share these caramel apple pie cinnamon rolls with you all now. I really miss all my friends and family and my church family. And I really look forward to being able to talk to you soon and share more baked goods with you in the future. And hopefully if you're interested in making these, you can just make them alongside with me when I share this video. Let me know how it goes if you do. I'd love to talk to you. And I hope that for now you enjoy the rest of your day and may God bless you. Thank you.